This is the Red All Over Show with me, Joe Beardsall, Josh Allerton, Alan Smith and Andy Simcox, as always. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. We're getting close to 2,000 now, which is exciting. If you feel like entering our ridiculous competition, as Andy likes to call it, to win uh, a copy of FIFA 2022 uh, <laughs> or a, an extra Laz Barnsley shirt, check out our other show. Um, any other plugs before we crack on and talk about football? Oh, massive plug to Simon Fulton, uh, one of the uh, guys who supports the show. Uh, Simon's just been amazing um, getting loads of stuff for the show we've just got some red all over beer mats so if you know any pubs who might be happy to have our beer mats obviously we're going to get Oaks uh, working men's club in Arsley because they're our pals who um, are business supporters of the show but any others let us know and we'll try and get them dropped off some beer mats when we get them through so that's exciting so cheers for that Simon great I've avoided it long enough shall we talk about Barnes losing to all a bit more now Josh, no. you, have, you haven't been here for a while, mate. Come on, I'll let you take misery first first round. Oh, wow. What a great what, what a great start this is. Well, I've watched it back and it weren't pretty. It, it weren't nice. I'm, I'll be honest, I'm glad I weren't, I weren't there to see it live. Um, uh, luckily, I got to watch it in the comfort of my own home. But yeah, it seems the, the thing that um, really struck home with me that were disappointing is that it was such a big game and we just didn't turn up. And for me, it's just all just want, just wanted to win more. And that's a, it's just a big problem. That's just a big issue mentality wise and things like that. It's just, you can't, it, it's just the way it looks like I can live with losing to Hull um, if we've given it as all, but I just don't think, I just don't think we did. And I think the manner of the goals were conceded were, Terrible, to be honest. Uh, inexcusable mistakes, and it's just one of them where it's rinse and repeat at the minute. Um, I knew we were riding the crest away from the derby game, and obviously um, Joe had done a great a great job to get to, to get a win there. And I weren't really hopeful that we were about to turn things around in such a quick period of time, but it looked like we had turned a corner. And then against Hull, it looked like we took one step forward and two steps back. We were back to where we were in the shop. And I wasn't expecting miracles from him, but I did get a bit a bit of hope from that derby game um, because at least we fought and competed against them and it just weren't there against Hull. Alan, it was so frustrating, like Josh says, because after so many defeats, so many poor results, you get that win against Derby. Like you said before, shackles off. We all expected to win. Andy, how many... How many people predicted a, a loss against all Barnsley fans in our competition? One. Just one. One out, so, one out of 66. Wow. One so out, I, yeah. That, that, that well-known optimist, Wayne Brown. <laughs> well, well played, Wayne. You got it right. <laughs> so that shows you that we all thought we were going to, we'd all turned a corner. And then Al, oh man, we just, like Josh said, just, I don't know what it was. We just didn't turn up for such a crucial game. And suddenly now it just feels like we're back to square one. We are against Derby, where I said on social me media, we just papered over the cracks, didn't we, with that one victory. Uh, and, and against Hull, probably 10 minutes off, thought we were in game, but then Grant McCann did a job on us. Two poor goals, as Josh says, to concede, and two Jasper Moon errors. Uh, and lo lots of players did turn up. Josh Benson had the mayor for me. Uh, in midfield. Uh, Gomez, I don't think we're on form. Uh, Defence, for their second goal, we were unragged. Unbelievable that he were left on his own to put that ball in back in it for their second goal. Where were they? Where were defence? Uh, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't understand why after Derby, they were all over at shop and there wasn't team unity and nobody, nobody in that team knew what they were doing. It was sad to see. Honestly, truthfully, he expects them after one one nil down to come back and give, give it us all. And Barnsley fans, if they get hundred and ten percent, we're falling behind them, win, lose, or draw. But I didn't see forty percent in that side on, on on Saturday. It was poor. Andy, we talked about it obviously on instant reaction, um, <laughs> so we'll not us two will not blabber on too longer. But did personnel make a difference? Obviously, Mads Anderson dropping to bench after playing. On Wednesday night, um, and then you know, obviously, you got the other two changes. He brought Cole off at half time, Joe Lauman. Some people were saying Cole having a really good game until he came off, so maybe you know, questioning that decision personally, I thought it was a right call, but you know, maybe what do I know? <laughs> yeah, what do you know? <laughs> <Exactly>. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, what do you know? 
Well, as Alan said and Josh said, we, we, we were easily picked apart. I mean, the second goal, um, uh, Callum Styles ca came inside to go for the man that had got the ball and, and left the man free at the back because he had to come in because there nobody else to go to. So he came flying in, little tap over, over him, and the man's completely on his own to bury it into the corner. We're supposed to have three centre halves. I don't know where any of them were because that you know the the bloke that were there that Callum had to come over. He should have been one of them, not Callum. The first one, <coughs> as Alan said, Jasper said, it, it, it weren't great, and, and they're unmarked. You know this, and it weren't the only two. You know, the number of occasions where they had players unmarked and could pick the spot, and I don't ever see that happening for us. I don't see us having players in the box like that, unmarked. Um, I have to say, I thought, I mean, a couple of things. I thought we, nothing stick, nothing ever stuck when we played it up, upfield. It came straight back, you know, our, our, our forwards. We had some good interpassing moves, but the basics, defending well. And, you know, looking, looking for a man to mark. If you're a defender and you're not near anybody, you know, it, it, it's junior school and Sunday, Sunday league football to say, if you haven't got a man to mark, find one. Find somebody to mark and mark them. And we, di and we didn't. We didn't. In his post-match interview, Corley himself has said, we're not making enough chances. We're not creating anything like the chances that we had last year. We're just not creating them. So, you know, the half chance. Away. But it's easy to create chances against us. So we, we're not creating chances. And we giving other teams chances. It's and you were lucky, Andy. There were only two. We were lucky. <coughs> we weren't. We were out. We had, a, we had a couple of chances ourselves. You know, Devante had an header that you know maybe he could have done better with. But you know, it's how it is. Uh, I, I was. I, I was with my son. I was saying to my son when when, when Callum Britton shot and again it, it was straight to the goal and he, and he saved it. I thought I'm, I'm going to start saying Callum Britton will never score. He's not going to score in this match. He'll never score in this match. Because I've done it before with Corley and with uh, and with Big Victor. Oh, amazing! You'll be right. You'll be right. You'll be right. You'll be right. You'll be So I, I said it rested match, and he still didn't score. So you know, come on, Callum. I am an old fool, so please make me look like one. You know, the other two have made me look like one. You try and make me look like one as well. So you know, we just. Uh, I, I'm not. I, I don't. It, I, I know a few people have said, "Oh, you know, it's, that's it's Joel Alman done." I, I, I don't know whether he should get a job or not. I think it's too early to tell for, for me personally. He had a chance to work with him himself uh, to put his ideas over. It will definitely show after this international break because, you know, whoever does it, whether it's Joe or whether it's somebody else, they've got a couple of weeks to work with them and you can't fall back on, I haven't been able to put, put my ideas into, into place. So, you know, that, that's when it'll tell. And, of course, we know what we're facing, which we'll talk about another time, no doubt. Um, yeah, we're leaving tricky. Fulham. We're leaving Fulham till tricky. next week. <laughs> tricky. Yeah, yeah. Need, need to have a few sleeps before then, Joe. I think need to get over it. I think, but no, nah, well, good. On to the manager debate. Let us know what you think. Um, I think we all sort of said. Obviously, you know, I'm, I've said it on the show. I'm a big fan of Joe Lauman as a person. I think he's a great guy. Really like him. Um, do I think he should be the next Barnsley head coach? I think it needs a bit more time. You know, if he gets the chance to have a few more games in charge, I do feel a little bit like, oh, you should have just played Mads. You should have just started <laughs> Mads. I don't know, obviously. I didn't, I'm didn't. i not behind the scenes. I don't know how tired Mads was or how risky he would have been a re, rehashing his injury if he'd have played. But for me, Josh, I'm just a bit confused at this defence at the minute. Elliot, bless him, he's on him sent. You need a Mads Anderson or a Toby Civic at the very least because Civic's played more games at the side. He's having to try and marshal, and this is no offence to him, Liam Kitchen and Jasper Moon are in the first full season at Championship. It's too much of a difficult task for him. He's getting really frustrated and you can tell. And you just think, why have you got Toby Civic and Mads Anderson sat there, you know, on bench when they could be playing? I just don't get it. I always agree. Um, play your best 11 you've got, you've got available. I like I said, I'm not sure if he's carried a knock or if he's struggling, but if he's struggling, get six minutes from him, get 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 a first half from him and then bring him off. Um and and get exactly what 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 you mean. Um, because Elix have, uh, having to do it because he's the most experienced defender and you need, especially in a back three, stroke back five, depending on how it looks, your your most experienced player is Helic. 
or Callum Styles, who's 21 year old. <laughs> Because he's, 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 well, he's probably the most experienced championship player we've got. At 21 year old, he's not going to be marshalling a defence to tell him he can't really do it from wing back. Callum Britton can't do it from wing back, who's got a full season of championship under his belt. So it has to be Hellick that does it. And for me, the first goal we conceded, it needed that head to tell him. Britton, we're in front, we're in front of his man, and he could, he could have told Jasper Moon, I'll sort that out. But he didn't because obviously pace up balls come in and Jasper Moon just reacted to it and it's pinged about everywhere. Um, and that's where you need someone, you need a more experienced defender there who's going to either see Brit- Britain come in and be like, he can deal with that. He's in a better, a better position to clear it away because I'm facing my own goal. And Jasper Moon just tried to affect that situation, impact it. And unfortunately, it's gone wrong. And you just need that experienced player to know what's doing in that situation. And I've got, I've got no doubt that Jasper Moon will eventually come good. But um, I just do think that he needs time to, he needs to be taken out, taken out of the side just to reflect this two weeks should do him a world of good, no games on, and just to reset himself. Because at the minute, I think he's been thrown under the bus massively. And to be honest, I was shocked that um, Joe Loudman did that, given you've seen what's happened with him previously. Um, with Shop, who just shoehorned him anywhere on the pitch. Um, you think that from an out, like if you saw that more from an outside perspective, that maybe he's just not ready yet and he just needs to be worked into the side a bit a, a bit more as opposed to be thrown in to deep end. But to come back to your point, I agree that he should he should he should start start Mads even just get 40, 45 from him. Well, if he's on bench, if he's on bench, then he can he can play, in my opinion. Exactly. Like if he's too injured, then he's not he's not on bench, is he? So if he's on bench, he's got some he can he can contribute to the game, or at least you're acknowledging he can contribute something. So why not? Why not start with him? It's I'm frustrated because I really like Joe. And I think if it was me and I had that one opportunity to try and get the Barnsley job, I'd just play my strongest eleven. I know it might sound a little bit selfish. Obviously, I don't want Mads Anderson to get injured again. Of course I don't, but I just don't know. Obviously, I don't know the risk factors as well, so I've got to acknowledge that. But if the, if there was only a small risk, I would have, I would have probably taken it. To be and honest, and on Saturday, lads, I feel for Brad Collins because he'd no support at back in front of him, had he? I mean, when that second goal went in, he was pulling his hair out. Do you see him? He was so frustrated. It, it, it you know, his anger showed. And as a goal, can you blame him? You want can your you players in front of you to give that cover and support you. And if it weren't for, for Brad again, it, it could have been, as I said earlier, it could have been four or five. I don't mind seeing that, though, for a player. At least it shows he cares. I mean, Roy Keane said in an interview the other day uh, about the Manchester derby. Sometimes if he were bored or he just weren't feeling a game or weren't into it, he'd go and smash someone. Go and do that. I want to see his players do that. At least it shows you care. At least if you're not having a good game, go and smash someone, get fans involved and get and, and make it a, fi- a, a fire a game instead. Go and do something to affect it. If you're not having a good game, go and affect it by doing that. You leave a leg in on someone, yeah, take, take, take a yellow card. They're, they're going to start reacting and suddenly you've, up, you, you've upset game. We're too nice to play against at minute. Everything, we're very sportsmanlike. What's that all about? Let's start wasting time. Let's start getting into someone. Let's start leaving a leg in. I want to see big tackles, knee height. Let's let, let's go for jugular. I can, for I can see Liam Kitchen watching this going. Well, there we go, Josh. I don't need any more invitation yeah, exactly. than that. <laughs> well, you, you saw what he did at Birmingham. He really riled up um, their players at that at, at that point in the game, and it sort of seemed to throw them for like 10, 15 minutes. Go and do that. We're not encouraging violence, but I understand what Josh is saying. A bit of passion, it goes a, a bit of passion. It goes a pitch. point on day. It probably <laughs> contributed to it a bit, but go and go and hit, go and smash someone in a tackle. Just go and hit someone hard, and it affects it. Wimp ball first, though. Wimp ball. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you can. Ball first. <laughs> I love how we've got that bad now at football. But it's just let's just have, let's just have a battle. <laughs> that's it. You've, you've got to say clearly that a back three is not working currently. A front three is not working currently. So we've got to check. You know, a lot of people are calling for, you know, whatever system you want, but basically four defenders um, that know the job. And, you know, I, I understand that. If you, I, I don't understand why we, why we haven't picked. We had a strong defence last year and they're still with us. They're actually still with us, but they're not playing. As Josh has said, they're not playing. And they, uh, that, that confuses, confuses the life out of me. The other thing that I think we've been missing, and I think it showed on the, the, the little bit of, when... Um, or be Alari played, we, we miss a big striker like him, or even Carlton Morris coming back for corners, and if, you know, be, being at that extra tall defender to get the ball away, 
you know, we, we, we're missing all, we're missing, you know, strikers being defenders as well. We're missing, we're missing it all. It's, it, it's not working, so it's, it's got to alter because it's just not working. Right, Reds, in part two of this week's show, we are going to be talking all about the manager. Who do we think it should be? Should it be Joe Lauman? Should it be someone else? It's not going to be Chris Wilder because he's going to Middlesbrough now, but I think we all expected that was probably going to happen anyway. Um, so, uh, yes, we will be talking about that in part two of this week's show. <laughs> 